Pero walang ganitong walang ito. Ito lang mga pula. Oh, yan lang. Okay lang. Keep yan lang sa mga furniture. Okay.
write your proper let me give you a brief history regarding Red Cross. Okay? So we all know that Red Cross came into picture because of this person, John Henry Donald. He is known to be the father of Red Cross, and for trivia, he is the first recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay? So he was a Swiss businessman, and he wanted to expand his business, so he went to Italy to beat Napoleon III. Unfortunately, when he went to Italy, what he saw was what? The Battle of Solferino. So the purpose of getting a credit from Napoleon III didn't push through because he helped the wounded and dying soldiers. Okay? Because during that war, uh, it was something the what? The Austro-Italian War, and people involved were about 350,000 soldiers. And of that 350,000 soldiers, 40,000 were wounded and dying. Okay? Know how to speak Italian? So, siamo tutti fratelli. That's the phrase that he used to say when helping somebody. So that he won't be um, killed or mistaken as, a, as, a, as, a, as an enemy. He always say, siamo tutti fratelli. Maybe he used to say, ciao. Okay? So, siamo tutti fratelli stands for what? We are all brothers. For Filipinos, what we used to hear is, and it is the what? Candy? Tutti? Tutti. <laughs> okay, so guys, so, so the, when, what he experienced in the war, that helping somebody who is in need, he went back to, to Switzerland and was able to publish a book a titled A Memory of Solferino. So when the book was published and given to the monarchs, his um, advocacy was supported. Okay? And he said in his book that there should be a relief society. And a what? It would promote international agreement. That's why the Red Cross came out because of his uh, advocacy. Okay? Now guys, so maybe you are seeing these three emblems, the emblem of humanity. First on the far left is your Red Cross. So Red Cross flag, uh, Red Cross flag, Swiss flag is white cross with a red background. We just changed the color because they were Swiss. They just changed it to what? Red Cross with a white background. But there was no religious inclination. Here comes a war in Russia and Red Cross or Red Cross volunteers came there to help but they were killed because they were mistaken as Christians. That's why the Red uh, Crescent emblem came out, came out. So mostly Red Crescent is being used by Islamic countries. But there are some Islamic countries who still prefer to use the emblem of Red Cross. And just 2005, the Red Crystal came. It's being used in Israel. And when you are seeing that emblem, it's a protective and indicative use. That you are there not to be harmed because you're there to help. Okay? Maybe majority of us used to uh, know the emblem of Red Cross and Red Crescent. Maybe haven't heard of Red Crystal. Right. Okay, now guys. So in short, guys, that's the very big history of Red Cross because of John Henry Dunant's idea. In the Philippine setting, it started as early as 1899, known to be what? Philippine Women's Red Cross. And of course, uh, when there was Japanese occupation or American occupation, there's still Red Cross, American Red Cross, Philippine chapter, Japanese Red Cross, Philippine chapter. But in 1947, Philippines was already a free country, that's why it became an official society of the organization. So 1947, officially, and today, what year? What year? 2024, no? So maybe uh, 80, 80, no? 57. 77? Uh, 77. 77 years old, official. But the, the movement started as early as 1899. Who was able to see a movie, General Luna? Yeah, okay. There was this line, Andiyan na po ang mga taga Cruz Roja. Translate. People from Red Cross are there. Okay. So, okay. So, that's, that's the line, Andiyan na po ang mga taga Cruz Roja. Okay, so there's the Philippine Red Cross already. Okay, now. 
In our own thinking, what does the Philippine Red Cross do? Blood. First thing to, that come to our mind would be blood. Okay. So in short, guys, these are the services rendered by Philippine Red Cross. First, in short, what? Blood services. So the blood is free, but we are paying for the what? Processing of the blood. If it's safe or not. We pay for the agents being used, the machines being used. Okay? Next sure what? Disaster management service. A uh, service of records responsible for disseminating the public what to do before, during, or after the disaster. On my part, I am with safety services because safety services gives education to the public regarding safety. So first aid training, CPR training, swimming courses, rope rescue and survival courses is under what? Safety services. So you know how to swim all. All know how to swim. So if you want to develop your swimming like a lifeguard or a um, swimming uh, water safe water safety instructor, it's nice to be what we want. But why? It's but the, the 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 problem would be the training because the last time you're training, you are required to swim at a distance of at least one mile without life jacket. So, all of us will, will take a big banka or a big yacht, go to one mile distance and jump and swim towards the shore. Open water. Open water, yes. But not in Manila Bay, ha? <laughs> it's either we go to Batangas or... So, wow. Pasig River, wow. <laughs> okay. So, it's, it will fall under safety services. And if you need a standby medic or first aider, standby ambulance, you can have it through safety services, but it has a corresponding fee. Okay? So health service is responsible for what? Simulating the public what to do in case there is what? Outbreaks. Okay? Welfare service is like the social welfare. Counseling is beautiful under welfare service. And lastly is your Red Cross youth. So anybody 25 years old below, <laughs> <laughs> skills for the youth, elementary, high school, or college, or even out of school youth. So it will fall under the umbrella of Red Cross youth. So those are the services being rendered by Philippine Red Cross. Okay? Now, sometimes you will be seeing Red Cross in the, uh, in the highway, if there's, especially if there is an accident. So there's this emergency response unit. If there's an accident, Red, the Red Cross would go there to help. That is free of charge. But if you want somebody to be brought to the hospital, go from hospital to the residence or residence hospital, it's called um, patient conduction, that has a corresponding fee. Because it's not an emergency case. Okay? So question so far regarding the Red Cross and its services. And, okay. So, wherever we go as long as there's a Red Cross, you have this seven fundamental principles, each person sure what? Humanity. Impartiality, neutrality, independence. So, Red Cross is a what? Non governmental organization. So, voluntary service, unity, and your universality. Okay. So, those are the principles of Red Cross with cross, crescent, or crystal. Now, guys. So, any questions so far? And? Or we're a bit too fast? Okay, lah. So, guys, first thing. So we all, we all know that accident can happen anytime, anywhere, right? Anytime, anywhere, it, it, it could happen to anybody. Okay? Here uh, at the office, what's the usual scenario that could happen? Elevator slip. Elevator slip. Okay. Paper cut, can it happen? Paper cut. Burn. High blood. <laughs> a high blood. A high blood. Hypertension. Hypertension. Heart attack. Heart attack. Heart attack, not heartache. Ah. <laughs> Heartbreak, also. <laughs> okay. So, guys, so it could, it could be a medical case or a trauma, a trauma case. So, with a medical case, there's this heart attack, hypertension, seizure. That's a medical case. How about for the trauma case? 
Trauma means what? You have injury like what? You have burns, you have wound, you have cuts, you have bruise. Those are what? Trauma. There's physical injuries. In medical term, we call that trauma. But for us, when you say trauma, that thing that, it, that we don't want to experience again. That's your psychological or emotional trauma. It's like love, no? <laughs> okay. Now, so first aid, an immediate help provided to a sick. So sickness. So like we said earlier, heart ailment or heart attack. A person who is having a heart attack was a sign. Or the first thing that you will see to a person having a heart attack. Hand holding on that? Yes. 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 Difficulty of breathing. Okay? Difficulty of speech. Yes. Okay? So, so if you saw somebody doing like this, oh, it's already a sign that the person is not feeling well. Okay? So we have to let the person stop from he, what he or she is doing. Okay? Let them rest. Okay? Now, guys, so sickness. How about. Is there a possibility that, that a person could faint? Why did the person faint? Lack of sleep? Hungry. Hungry? Right. Visa was not approved? Can't stand a lot. Okay? So guys, now, uh, what do we do for seizure in the first place? Seizure. Seizure, what do we do for people having seizure? Problem with the side. In our own understanding, what do we do for people having seizure? Around on one side. Yes, sir. Call 911. Call 911. Right away, 911. Anybody? <laughs> yes, ma'am. As far as I know, we put you put the uh, something on the top so it doesn't choke on the tongue or bite it. Then okay. it's having seizure. Remember when we are having seizure, generalized seizure, our body tends to our muscles tend to spasm. So we don't even we can't even breathe. Our tongue shrinks, so you won't be able to bite your tongue. Okay, what do, what, what just do we do? We just let the person. Have his moment. <laughs> it is more that seriously, we don't let, or we don't do anything. Except we protect the victims from having the what head injury. So we put cloth at the back of the head if the area is what solid. If the area is carpeted smooth, it would be okay. So we just do the. We, we don't restrain the person. We don't put something in the mouth. Okay, because we put, if we put something on the house, what would happen? We might break that teeth. Okay? We don't restrain the person because we might, the person might have a what? Fracture. So we don't restrain, we don't put something in the mouth. What we're going to do then is just to what, protect the victim's head by putting a cloth at the back of his head. And we let the objects near him, we remove it so that it won't fall onto them. Okay? But we have to time how long did the seizure last. Because if the seizure lasts more than four minutes, the brain starts to die. Because the brain has not reserve of oxygen. Okay? So you need to what time? How long did it last? Because zero to four minutes, the brain that doesn't have a, uh, an oxygen and he was given first aid and the person became, the person was okay then, most likely, he will not be having a brain damage. But the longer the time that the person has no blood supply to the brain, the greater the chances that he will be, he will be having a what brain damage. That's why every second counts when we respond to an emergency, especially if there's the what breathing and pulse. Okay. Now, so more than five, more than four or five minutes, we, we will bring the person to the hospital. What if the victim who had seizure is a, is a pregnant person? So, baby is also at stake. So, it should we also need to bring the person to the nearest medical facility. Uh, you know somebody who is diabetic? If a known person, if, if a person who had seizure is known to be diabetic, then we have to bring the person to the nearest medical 
as negative because he is diabetic and he had seizure. So those are the what factors that we need to bring the person to the nearest medical facility in case there is seizure. Are we clear on that? Because normally, as I have said before, people who are having epileptic episode, they have this warning sign. They can feel, hear, or see something. If they feel that, it's a sign for them that they will be having this episode. So they will just go to an area in which they are safe, and they will have their moment. Okay? If they can hear, feel, or see something, and they, will, they can only be the ones who can feel it. It's what called a what warning sign, or in short, aura. Okay? Question for seashore. Yeah, I guess you won't wait four minutes before making preparations to move the person to the hospital. I mean, it's not like you wait four minutes and then, oh, maybe now we call the... Uh, uh, the pointer is, uh, you can call 911, you yeah, can call. Exactly. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I would send the person anyway to the hospital for checkup or whatever. So, uh, and if you went first, wait four minutes. Uh, yes. That's why you have to time. Yeah, but I would do the long. Is that the advice to, to call immediately yeah. so that ambulance will already... If you don't know the history of the person, yes. But if you know that a person is epileptic, then you just type it. <laughs> it's okay. If it's not that he has this episode, it's no problem. But we, we really have to type. But it also depends where the person is. For example, if something happens here in the office before this elevator, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I do. Mean. So I would yeah. exactly. start immediately with getting help and yeah. and yeah. whatever. But if you know that the person has this kind of of uh, history, then yeah. you have to really like it. Yeah. Okay. Because a per an epileptic person, once they have their they have their episode within two minutes, they will just stand up and as if nothing happened. What does the time you really do? Because you can't do anything. You don't have any influence on. What is happening? Because we can just treat the person to check for that yeah. brain but is, function. Is that necessary for the doctors to know? They didn't have to know how, how, how did the episode last, how, how, how long did the episode last? So that they can have an idea. Okay? But if you are unsure, then much, much, much better to bring it to the nearest medical facility. It was so clear to me, because you say just leave them. Take care of the head and move the obstacle. Yes, 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 yes. Yes or no, in a safe position. That's what's what happening. Yeah, safe position. It can so be like supine or side lying, but yeah. mostly supine position. Yeah. Okay. If the person recovers, we put them to one side lying position. Okay. That's the only thing we can do. Okay. So it still falls under sickness. Sickness, but if you if you if you if if you don't know what to do, call nine one one. Do you have your partner ambulance or no? Okay. Should we have one? Yes, you can call the. We do have the number that we can call. Yeah. The like. Uh, the like like lifeline. Like, 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 <laughs> Okay. But is it advice to have one to to already? Do we have a contact one? We just call <laughs> and then we, we will just deal with that. Okay. I, 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 I can't recommend, but we <laughs> really decide. <laughs> what would you recommend? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there are some companies that they really have their standby ambulance. Okay. Some big hotels we have to stand by. It's more for that to have another standby. Yeah. But for a building like this, yeah. it's possible. Yeah. That the building has to stand by on that, or is that also too small? How many are you in the company? No, 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 that's three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question so far. If we are still under sickness, huh? we are still under sickness, so seizure. Heart attack, I said earlier, if the person is doing like this, let the person stop from what he or she is doing. 
Okay, what else? We need to what? Ask. Do you have any indication? When was the last time you had your kind of feeling? Okay? Now. What, uh, what else? What, what else? Oh. In diabetic emergency, known diabetic person, what do we do? Gender. If we have the glucometer. But what if we don't have? And the person is known to be diabetic. The best thing that we can do is to what? Give the person candy. something sweet. Something sweet. So we should all, we, we should be always sweet. Yes. Yeah, much better with simple sugar, huh? Chocolate is last resort because complex sugar. The chocolate is what complex sugar. Soda can be used. Soda. Okay. Sugar-free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if a person is not with a diabetic, let the uh, and the person not feeling well, just give them sweets. As long as they are able to swallow. Okay. So sickness. For a person having stroke, is it possible? A person can have a stroke, or um. It shall be say cerebrovascular accident in, in which half of the body is paralyzed nor normally and the person is complaining of what? Numbness. So we should act fast. We check for the victim's face. Normally a victim's face is what? Should be equal, right? But if a person is having stroke, it can have a what? An equal face. Okay? The, a normal person can raise both arms. A stroke person can either raise one or neither arms can be raised. S is speech. A normal person can talk and uh, we can understand what the person is saying. But if a stroke person's speech is what slurred, then it's already a what? Warning sign for us. Okay? And that's the issue what time? When what when that did that sign and symptom start then. Okay? Fast. In case of stroke, we need to think and act fast also. Okay? Now, face, arm, race, speech, and time. Okay? Now, so it's for other sickness. How about injuries or injured? So common injury in the office would be cuts. Paper cut. What do we do for them? Band -aid. Band -aid. <laughs> <laughs> Wash the wood with soap and water, apply pomodon iodine or betadine, and then we put a band aid. Gauze and then bandage. Okay, now injury. How about for uh, birds? What do we do for birds? Cold water, yes. Example, blind corner, blind spot, you were holding a coffee. Can you bring your coffee in your area, no? Yes. Then suddenly you, you bump. Then your coffee was spilled. It's either to you or to the one you bump with. <laughs> so it could cause burn. Management, cold water. That, that, that's the best thing we can do. Do you put toothpaste? No. No, because it would burn further. So toothpaste is... Because some would still prefer to use toothpaste. So water is the best accessible first aid management for birds. Okay. What else? How about for a um, bruise? What do we do for bruise? So, cold compress. Yes. Bumps. Cold compress. Now, so if we want other one, injury or trauma. Is fall possible in the area? Possible. So fall from how high the height is would be? Steps? Five steps. Because what, why did the person fall? Texting while walking, no? <laughs> Okay. So in short, the everything that we have done to the person who had injury or sickness before being to the hospital is what we call a first aid. An immediate help that 
being provided to a sick or injured person before we bring them to the nearest medical facility. Next, we also have the what? Basic life support. So basic life support is what procedure that we, we do to check the person's condition if he is conscious, he is breathing or not, and we give what is lacking to the person. Now, so in short, so respiratory arrest, it means the person is not breathing but the person still has a what? Heartbeat. Cardiac arrest, it means what? The person is definitely not breathing and have no pulse. Okay? So whatever is lacking in there, that's we're going to give. Okay? Now, so basic is because it's only ourselves that could help the person. Okay? It will, be, it will, call, it, it will have advanced life support if the 911 that you called also comes. And they are the ones having the what? Gadgets. Do you have, do you have an AED in the office? Yes. Oh, very good. Do everybody know how to use it? No. Oh, no. Have you seen it? Yes. Okay, very good. Which brand? AED. Is it Sol or um, Karjak Science? It's Kinton. Kinton from Netherlands. Uh, never heard. There's something to know. All I know is just Karjak Science and Zol because that's not uh, AED that I used to see. But there, there, there are many brands. Okay? So later we, we, we could show it to everybody. Yeah. Okay? So that everything, everybody can be familiar with it. Okay, so why do we give first aid? To preserve life. To prevent further harm and complication. Example, prevent further harm. A colleague of yours fell with an outstretched hand and you saw the victim's hand to is what? Bended or deformed. What did you do? You held it and pulled it. Did you prevent further harm? We promoted. Because the rule is, we have to immobilize or split it in the position that we have found it. Okay? Now, complications. Example, medical condition. A colleague of yours is having a what? Stomach pain. Then, you have this medicine for stomach pain. What's next? You saw your colleague sing. Sign and symptoms like your mother. What did you do? Oh, I just bought medicine of my mother for stomach pain. You also take this one. And you also, you also what? Took what the first, your colleague was giving you. And after taking it, if you minutes, you're having this one. Type of what? Allergic reaction. So in short, you didn't prevent, but you promoted complication. You worsen that situation. As first aiders, we don't give medication, we don't prescribe medication. We just assist in giving or taking the prescribed medication to the victim. Okay? Now, okay, there is a Zol. That is Zol. Zol. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that one. <laughs> okay, now. Okay, guys. So, in short, guys. We prevent for the heart complication and seek immediate medical help. Number nine one one. Do you have the number of uh, this is part of Makati, right? Yes. Uh, under barangay, which barangay? Bell. Okay. Bell. You have a number of barangay with air. Yes, it's emergency. It's in emergency police. Okay, because once you call them, it the time of response will be shorter because they can respond right away. Because if they have nine one 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 four three, what would happen? It will, it will take time, they will get the info, what happened, how we are affected, and then after dropping the call, 911 would call the nearest, nearest agency that would respond to you. But if you call your uh, barangay, uh, the barangay Bel Air, then they can respond right away. So time of response is what? Faster. Okay? Now what else? Provide the assurance. So when providing the assurance, we give emotional and psychological support. We don't nag the person. I told you not to do that and yet you did it. Look at you now. <laughs> Are you giving reassurance? 
It's your last day today. <laughs> okay. So this is what this is why we give first aid. These are the objectives for first aid. Okay. Next, as a first aider, we are a bridge between the victim and the physician. Okay. Now what else? We, before responding to the emergency or to the victim, we always ensure personal safety. That's why we always check the scene is safe. Safety of whom? As as first aider first, the victim or the patient, and lastly are the by standard. What else? So gain access to the victim. How can you gain access to the victim? How can you gain access? Ask permission. Ask permission. And you, you have to identify yourself. I'm Raymond. I know first aid. Can I help? Okay, because if, it, if, if you right away hold the person, what does the person feel? You didn't ask permission. Surprise. Surprise. Or even what? Offended. Offended. That's why you always ask permission prior to give help. And you identify yourself. Okay. Also, the office and fire. Yes. He learned that it's last month or so, but that was the assumption that you will be on the street or whatever. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The office and fire. Yeah. Okay. I don't have to identify. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> the permission, I don't know. Yeah. Some, uh, are all, uh, okay. Now, what else? So, determine any threats to a patient's life. Threat. How do you know that a person is in critical condition? Example, your colleague is do, holding the victim's chest. Is the sign of critical condition? Yeah. Yes. Holding the victim's neck? Choking. Choking, yes. How about unconscious? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Worst scenario, no breathing and no pulse. Okay? That's why we need to be what? We need to be observant. Okay? So, so more advanced when they don't care as needed. So, 911, 143, or even your partner ambulance if you wish to have. Okay? What else? So, provide needed care for the patient or the victim. Example, your colleague is having chills. What's the immediate, immediate need of your colleague? Heat. How will you give heat then? Embrace it. <laughs> Embrace it away? Embrace. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if there's a blanket, if there's a blanket, blanket. If there is jacket, jacket. If there is shawl, shawl. If there are no other options but to give it through hugging, Ask permission first. Can I hug you? Oh. Okay, guys. A person is having severe bleeding. What do we do? Immediately to stop that bleeding. What do we do then? Control. How do we control the bleeding? Direct pressure and pressure bandage. Okay. Next. Call my number. Okay. Now. Okay, guys, you saw your colleague looking pale and the colleague, your colleague is feeling dizzy. What do you do then? Feeling dizzy and the face is looking pale. Immediate need? We need to bring back the normal color. So we have to let the person lie down and elevate the legs. Yes. Okay. Now, what else? You saw your colleague having a red face. What does, what does it indicate? This is not working. This is not working? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe high body temperature, no? Maybe having an allergic reaction? Or maybe having a what? Case of hypertension or high blood pressure. So if you know a person having a high blood pressure and you don't have the Stigma manometer, you have it in here, no? Blood pressure apparatus. Nine. Then, so the victim is not feeling well, what to do What to do now? We can let the person lie down and elevate the legs because the face is already red. So what do we do now? Lying down, but the upper body is elevated. Okay? 
If the face is pale, you raise the legs or the tail. If the head is red, you elevate the upper body. Okay. So those are the needed care for the person so that their, victim, their condition could not worsen. Okay? What's next? Assist EMT and other medical personnel. Okay? So EMT is also a training higher than first aid. Advanced cases. And then the EMT uses gadgets. Okay? Now what else? So whatever we have seen or done to the victim, we used to what? Record it. So record whatever we have seen or done to the victim. So that once you transport or endorse the victim to the hospital, the doctor could see if what you have done is correct or not. Okay, and they can be, and they could give immediate correction for the wrong things that you have done. Okay? What else? So as a first aider, we have this, all of us have our own characteristics, right? All of us are unique. But as a first aider, we should be what? Gentle. So should not cause pain. Be gentle. What is gentle in Filipino? Sa Tagalog? Malumanay. Malumanay. Malumanay, mahinahon, banayan. How about in Dutch? Gentle. Uh, 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 oh, gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Should not cause pain. Okay? Be gentle. They're not gentle. They don't have the word like that. We should also be resourceful. So we could use whatever the best, whatever is at hand, we could make use of it. Example, a colleague of yours has a, has a what? Broken arm. And the arm is what? Bended or deformed. How do we split or immobilize it? We will be using what? Stick. A ruler. ruler. You have a ruler. Yes. But see if it the ruler is what? Quite long, huh? That could immobilize. So it could be a ruler or a stick. Can we use cardboard? We fold yes. it? Yes. yes. So be resourceful. Should make the best use of things at hand. You need a sling, but you don't have a triangular bandage. Can we use the ID holder? Yes. And put it over here? Yes. Or we can even put this one over here. Or if you have this polo, all button until down, and you can unbottle, unbottle the lower portion and flip up. And then you bottle. So that you can have a sling. So be resourceful. Okay. Can you picture? Yes. Okay. So we should always also be resourceful. Okay. Observe. Uh, also, can we use a belt as a sling? Yes. Yes. You can make some new belt. Just put your belt in here and sling already is sling. Okay. Now. Observer should notice all sides. As I had said earlier, a person holding the chest is a sign of what? Having a heart attack or not feeling well. Okay? Holding the neck, side of choking or difficulty of breathing. How about looking pain? What does it, imp what does it imply? It indicates what? Because of hunger. Feeling dizzy. Lack of sleep. Lack of sleep, yes. Okay? So, paleness. You already know what to do with, with a, uh, if a person is looking pale. How about if the person is what? Looking red. Or red, uh, face is red. red. Having redness on the face. Allergic, Allergic reaction. Okay. High body temperature. Heart broken. Heart What else? High blood pressure. Or even. Uh, uh, the person is what? Angry. Yeah. Or even intoxicated. <coughs> Does anybody go here to the office intoxicated? Yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Possibly hangover, no? Okay, now. Do you know what to do for hangover? 
And you saw your boss smile until here. Will you find a leave? Yes. Yes. But when your boss came to the office, the face is looking like that. We don't find a leave. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 so observe that. Okay? Now, tactful. Okay. So being tactful, we should not alarm the victim. Example, your colleague is holding the victim's is holding his or her chest and you say, Oh, you're having a heart attack. <laughs> so it could it could it could alarm the victim. So we don't do that. Okay? We just give emotional psychological support. We should be empathic or empathetic. Okay? So empathetic or empathic should be comforting. Okay? Okay, don't worry. I'll take over for the uh, for your paperwork. I'll take charge of it. Don't worry. Wow. And that is your what? Respectable or respectful. In short, as a first aid, you should maintain a professional and caring attitude. So those are the what characteristics of a good first aiders. I think all all of us have this one, That's right? Okay. Next. So sometimes. There are hindrances in giving first aid. What are the factors that could that, that we cannot give proper first aid in our own in our own understanding? What are the hindrances then? Crowded. Crowded place? Here, no, no. <laughs> the, the, the victim or the first aider? First aider. First aider. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one of the hindrances in giving first aid is the what? Unfavorable surroundings. It means it may be too cold or too hot or even rainy or even dark. So we, we cannot give proper first aid or appropriate first aid. So unfavorable surroundings. Next, what Sir had said earlier, presence of crowd. Why does the crowd become a hindrance? <laughs> Sir? They could give wrong information. Maroon Magmiro, no? Issue. Uzi. Uzi. Uzi Zero. Uzi Zero. Can they be of help? Sometimes. Depends on the people. <laughs> <laughs> they can be of how? By calling the emergency number, by assisting and lifting the victim, and by assisting the first aider what to do. The example, the first aider needs water or whatsoever, then they can assist the first aider or even the victim. And that is the what? Pressure from the victim or relative. This is the reality. Okay? okay? So these are the hindrances in giving first aid. Pressure from the victim or the relative itself. Especially if the person is what? person involved is a high profile person. Okay? Now, question so far, and next. For us not to 
have this um, contact and prevent ourselves from having the disease, then we have the what? Preventive and protective measures. So first measure what? Universal precautions. So there are a what? Set of strategies being done to what? To prevent transmission of blood-borne pathogens or any fluid that is infected and holding it, we can be infected. So in short, what is the universal precaution then? We used to do this one every day, these this precautions. Hand washing, personal hygiene, and equipment cleaning and disinfecting. Those are the what? Preventive and protective measures of the what? Universal precaution. Hand washing, personal hygiene, and equipment cleaning and disinfecting. Now, so in short, so isolation, isolation of, the, of yourself from the body substance of a person by using the what? Personal protective equipment. So we need to use gloves, masks, goggles, or even face mask. Those are what we call PPE. So personal protective equipment. Is it possible that we can run out of gloves sometimes? Yes. And the person is having a bleeding and we need to control the bleeding? So can I use it with my bare hand? As much as possible? No. So what would be my alternative for the gloves? Can I use food gloves if we have? Can I use plastic? Yeah. Question, is there a plastic material here in the office? If we don't have gloves? It may, yes. So that we don't have contact with that blood of the person. Handkerchief. Ah, that is cotton. It should be what? Yeah, yeah. Paper. No. Because we're talking of body fluids. Okay? If you don't have gloves, you can use plastic. Clean trash bags. Okay. How, but how big is the trash bag? So be it will fall under what resource? Fullness. Okay? So guys, so a person having this PPE, having uh, gloves, mask, goggles, even face mask. Now guys, so hand washing, as I said earlier, personal hygiene and equipment cleaning and disinfecting. Grooming. At home, do we have individual nail cutters or one nail cutter for all? Personal. So the proper way should have been sanitized first before using and sanitize again before putting it back. But in reality, get, use, and put it back. But it should have been what? Before and after use, we should always sanitize. Okay? Now, so dressing, guys. When you say dressing, what's a dressing? Hungry na? Dressing? <laughs> so when you say dressing, it's a gauze. Sterile material used to cover the wound. Gauze. Remember, guys, if your wound is two inches long, you need to have a bigger dressing with an allowance of one inch to completely cover the wound. Okay? Now, yes, yes, to, to completely cover the wound. Okay? Now, so, if we control the bleeding, protect the wound from infection, and absorb liquid from the wound, so that's what? Blood plasma, water, and pus. So if a wound has a pus, it means what? It's already an old wound because it's already infected. Okay. You like donuts, no? Bavarian flavor. Joke. Okay. Now, so for the dressing not to fall off, we need to put a what? Bandage. So bandage. A clean cloth material used to hold the dressing in place. So for those who had their first aid training, are the bandages still with you or yes. at the office or at home? Na? At home. At home. Okay. Now, here. 
So advantage other uses, it can control the bleeding, it could tie the splints in place, immobilize body part, and for arm support to be used as a sling. It could be cravat or it could be open. During your time, we had it in an open face, right? Okay. If it's folded, it's a what? Cravat kind of sling. Okay. Now guys, so guys, so if we don't take care of ourselves, then we could transmit diseases. So these are the, 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 the conditions in which how we can transmit diseases through direct contact. It means you have no gloves and you help a person's wound with your bare hand. So you have contact with the blood. You have the what? Direct contact. How about indirect contact? Example. You put a ghost, then the ghost fell off, and somebody uh, took it using the bare hand. It's a form of what? Indirect contact. Or either a person who had a wound went to the washroom and used the doorknob, and somebody also followed holding where the uh, injured person held his hand, and he had what contact with the what? blood on the doorknob. Say what? Sign of what? Indirect contact airborne transmission so we have to we can, we can what inhale the droplets that's why you use mask we have cough or flu or when we even sneeze we hope we sneeze where inside or either here okay so we prevent it to to transmission to transmit because of what airborne transmission and nothing is short bites at the office what kind of animal could bite us? Insects. In insects? We have pest control. Pest, oh, we have pest control. <laughs> Human bites. Yeah. <laughs> could be. <laughs> could be. <laughs> okay. Stray animals possible, no? If you're outside. Okay. So if we have a stray animal bite, if we have animal bite, just wash the wood, we soak and water, apply antiseptic, and go to the yard. Nearest animal bite center okay now guys so i'm sure that you are aware of in in glove usage donning and undonning just remember the glove to glove skin to skin so i'll be wearing a glove first and then what's the proper way to remove the gloves i know majority of you are uh, know know how to how, how to undone a used glove Okay, remember, just remember that, uh, glove to glove, skin to skin, okay. Example, a person is having a, an injury. I hold the injury, I go through the bleeding, I tie a bandage. Now, my glove is soiled with blood. So how do I remove these soiled gloves then? What did I said earlier? Glove to glove. So one hand with gloves, hold here, and pull. So glove to glove, then like this. Skin to skin, this one insert under. And then, hello. so glove to glove, skin to skin. So you don't have contact with that outside surface. Are we clear? That's a proper way how to what? Remove a use glove or contaminated gloves. Okay? Now, then, it says there, wash hands thoroughly. Okay? Question so far. Ah, pinch the glove, slip, pull off. So, glove to glove and skin to skin. Now, guys, if, no, if there's no question, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is the what? Emergency action principle. This is the step being done when you respond to an emergency. So maybe this is a rehash or refresher for those who had their first aid training. Okay? So in short, guys, as I had said earlier, when there's an emergency, the situation could be chaotic. So in short, we need to what? Compose ourselves and we need to prioritize. Okay? So what does what does the step one we do? See size up. Is it is it safe to enter? Okay? Safety. So we should use our what? Senses. 
Sense of sight, smell, hearing, and touch. Sense of taste, can we use it? In case the food doesn't taste right, then sign for what? Food point? Yes, it, it, can, it, it can be, but uh, at the moment, um, the sense of taste will be changed to what? Common sense. Okay? Now, is diarrhea or food poisoning possible in the office? Can it happen? Yes. Now, so since I have, knowing what happened, cause of injury or nature of fitness. Example, cause of injury. A victim fell two flights of stairs. What could happen to the person? What could happen? Can he have fracture? Yes. Can he have head, head injury? Yes. Okay? So cause of injury. So that you had you, you you should know what to do. You should know whom to call and which equipment are you are going to bring or to use. Nature of illness. Now guys, nature of illness. So is it maybe because of an allergic reaction? Is it because of what? Food poisoning? Is it because of a what? Heart attack? Or either hypertension? Okay? Now guys, in short, we should know what happened so that we know what to do. We know what our approach is. Okay? Bystanders, their role, yes, they can assist the person. They can call um, emergency number or even they can what? They, they can also be a crowd controller. They can be a human chain. Okay? Number of casualties so that when you ask for assistance, we know how many vehicles we are needing based on the number of casualties or persons involved or injured. Okay, what else? Asking permission or consent. Okay? Now, uh, do you remember that consent like express and implied consent? Just to remember, if a person is fully conscious and asking for help, having no mental impairment as a what? Express or informed consent. But if the person is unconscious, severely injured, mentally impaired, minor implied consent, because they are not they they are not they are not, the pro, uh, uh, proper, uh, proper, they are not properly disposed. Okay. How about a person who is intoxicated? Express or implied? Yeah. Implied. Okay. So you ask permission so that you can gain access to that person. So after checking that a person's area is safe, now we go to the what primary assessment. So when you say primary assessment, it means it means we check the person if he or she is in a life-threatening condition. Is the person conscious? Is the person unconscious? Is the person having breathing? Does the person have pulse? So we do that for primary assessment. So first, we check the person's responsiveness. So the most common is what? Hey, hey, are you? Okay. If the person is what? Foreign looking. How about if fellow Filipinos? Hoy, hoy. How about in that shirt? Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Okay. Now, guys. So, <laughs> okay, guys. So, can you see me here, over here? Okay. So first, if the person is alert, it means you can what? You can talk to the person. The person is ask, ask, asking for help. The person is saying what he is feeling. Now, guys. Alert. Second, sure what? Responsive to voice. You don't. You, you don't even have in contact with the person, and you say something, and the person will not follow commands. So the person is what? Responsive to voice. How about responsive to pain? It means upon tapping the victim's shoulder, when we tap, not just soft, a bit hard, so that the victim could hear it. Or either upon kneeling beside the victim. You have knelt the victim's hand. What did the victim do? He pulled his hand because of that pain. Okay. In a rural area, 
if a person fails, what do other people do? In the rural area here in the Philippines, what do they do? Okay, they, they fund the person, yes. What else? Sabud what? Slap the person. Sabud what? Pull the hair. <laughs> okay. But there are some extreme cases. They even pull the junjun. <laughs> In some cases, sir, yes? Yes, true. Uh, which area, sir? Abilities, downstairs. No, no, no. Manila. Manila. Sa aking area, sir. Manila. 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 Sa aking area, sir. Sa aking area. area. Which area that the junior is being pulled when somebody faints? Sa lugar. Sa lugar. Sa lugar. Okay. But usually so that a drug is in the rural area sa mga provincia, countryside. Um, Okay. You have witnessed or you have witnessed? You have witnessed? I've seen that. I've seen that. Excuse me. Where should I be? I've seen that. Where? There's no hair. Yeah. Yeah. Call 
first. But if the person is having a difficulty of breathing, then you do the what? <coughs> first. And as well, when you came at home, you already saw your family member or relative unconscious. You didn't witness the arrest, then give first aid first before calling an assistance. So this is what, what to do if care first or call first. These are the criteria. So drowning victim. So care first. Okay? So but the, this this one could only happen when if we are alone. Okay? Question so far? Huh? Okay, now next is your what? So after tapping the victim's shoulder, unresponsive, uh, you let somebody call the um, medical assistance. Then you do the what? Open the airway. How do you open the airway? We just have to what? Tilt. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. So we can just what? Tilt the head back. Hold the victim's forehead, hold the victim's chin, and pull back. What do we call this one? Head, tilt, chin, lift. If there is no what? Suspected, there is no suspected injury in the head, neck, or spine. That's why you need to know what happened. If a victim fell from a height, suspected injury, suspected injury to the head, neck, or spine, can we do this one? Can we take the head back? What do we do then? I just uh, hold the victim's the head over here and put it like this. What do we call this one? It's called manual head stabilization. Upon holding the victim's head, advice, sir or ma'am, I'm holding your head. Don't move. We just wait for that thing to arrive. But 